Northern Ireland's coastline is known throughout the world for its rugged beauty. Our shores around Port Rush attract thousands of people every summer. To make this a safer place, volunteer lifeboat crews give up their own time and sometimes risk their own lives. This is their story. Welcome to Port Rush Sea Rescue. <laughs> Summer's evening boat trip turns to disaster outside Port Stewart. Well, I could see with raggage and I could make out the sea guys in the water. I tell you, through those bloody frightened. The trauma of turning out to a drowning man on the river bank. And the Irish sea captain who swaps his ferry for the Port Rush lifeboat. You don't get much better than driving one of these. Imagine a warm summer's evening and hardly a ripple breaking on the surface of the water. What could be nicer than a spin in a new sports boat? Well, that's what three men thought until minutes after they launched from Port Stewart Harbour and their boat sank like a stone. People on Port Stewart's harbour wall looked on in horror as the sports boat began to sink. It happened so suddenly the three-man crew had no option but to try to swim for the shore in freezing water. Davy and Joan, two local people, were in the harbour getting ready to go sea fishing. We were walking towards the boat when all of a sudden someone shouted at us and said, is there diesel in your boat? There's someone out, out there in trouble. We ran to the steps and saw just the pointy end of the boat going down. To be honest with you, it was the quickest we've ever put to sea. Usually when we're coming out of the harbour, we're doing about two or three knots. We're just toodling along. But by that day when we saw the wreckage in the sea, we came out pretty fast, the full speed, 10 knots. When we turned out of the harbour, then we were able to see that there was a lot of things floating in the water and we weren't sure if there were persons or objects at that point. So it was quite hairy. All I could see was wreckage and I could make out the tea guys in the water. I tell you the truth, it was pretty frightened. It was about her, and very her, you know. It was not, Davy's no brave man, I was frightened, yeah. I was frightened of killing someone. It wasn't until we got closer that we realised that we were nearly up on one of the guys, um, who clearly was exhausted. He was the one that had tried to swim to shore to raise the alarm. He was pretty weak when we got him. The second guy I was going to pick up when I was turned, but he waved me away to the third guy. We would have been third on my list. That was an actual rotation of a pick-up. But, uh, so I had to do a 180. Pick, uh, he was later, I uh, found his name was Jim. Pick Jim up and then go back again on another 180 to pick a third guy up. Uh, I don't think it would have lasted more than a, I'm no expert, but I don't think it would have lasted more than another five minutes. I don't believe it at all. They were all very, very cold. Well, I used actually, I've got it here. This is the thing that was on this original, um, this was the original pilot boat, and this was a, an implement that was put on the pilot boat, obviously for in case a pilot fell into the water, so we didn't have much time to think, so we just quickly grabbed this, and it was a very important object on that day. The Coast Guard asked the Port Rush inshore lifeboat to launch. There was no official word on the men in the water, and it was vital to get a search underway. Well, initially we were told there was a, a boat had capsized, Port Stewart, and there was three persons in the water. Port Rush ILB, Port Rush ILB, Belfast Coast Guard, over. Oh, 
last Coast Guard uh, just arrived in Port Stewart Harbour. We'll fill you in when we get some details. Over. Hello, Charlie, Dallas Coast Guard Roger. The casualties are with the SG Martin. Uh, they're saying that they don't require medical assistance, but if you could just, in advance of our Coast Guard team arriving, if you could just uh, assess the situation, see if you think they need medical assistance, and try and keep them there until our Coast Guard team arrive. Over. Belfast Coast Guard, Port Shelby. Yep, we're alongside the vessel at the moment. We'll get back to you in five. Over. The three survivors were talking to Coast Guard officials on the quayside. The guys in Port Stewart got them into their own boat very, very quickly. Um, we arrived on scene just as they got up to the harbour wall. Um, we checked them out and they weren't really uh, in any difficulties. You know, they were warm enough and they were just a bit, uh, a bit shocked that their boat was sitting on the seabed. Uh, apparently their boat uh, started taking water on. They had made a phone call at that point to try and find out from the people they bought it off what might be happening. Um, the boat seemed to sink very quickly. Three or four minutes is pretty much enough to uh, put somebody under with hypothermia. <laughs> they would start, they would go down. They're very, very fortunate to be alive. One of the men insisted they were not in any real danger. We capsized, well, the water was taken in and we sunk and we just got overboard and we waited a few minutes until this man came out, so. So you were just sitting in the water, you weren't in any danger? No, no, none whatsoever. I mean, the guys that were with us were all pretty experienced in swimming. Yeah. What do you think happened to the boat? Well, it took in water. Uh, just actually, the motor stopped, and it probably it just took in water at the back, and we couldn't bail it out. So obviously, it went down. The men's major concern was that they'd lost a lot of personal belongings. Okay. All right, we'll go and take a look. The crew, Kelly, Jared, and Al, agreed to see what they could recover. The sea was strewn with uh, their equipment, wetsuits, shoes, uh, pieces of the boat, seats and stuff, so they did request if we could go out and retrieve a few bits for them. Luckily, one of the guys had his passport and some very important personal documents in, in a bag, which were okay, a bit wet, but we did get them back to him, and uh, the guy got his car keys back. We just go up to the slip and pull us all onto the slip. Uh, July and August around here is what we call silly season, you know. It can get quite hectic for us. Obviously, this is a, a beautiful day, and these guys were heading out on their boat for the evening, you know, to enjoy the weather. You know, when we get good weather, you know, we'll get a lot, a lot more shouts. You got that, Anne? I'm afraid these incidents tend to go one way or another. Um, once your boat sinks, if you, as these people today were, uh, didn't have your life jacket on, you have very little way of keeping yourself up. And although it's a, a blistering hot day here today, the sea is very, very cold. And they were in the water for five minutes. If they'd been in any longer than that, uh, and even at five minutes, they were probably starting to suffer the effects of cold. And it would only have been a matter of time before they lost coordination and could easily have drowned. With anything that floated packed into the inshore lifeboat, the men were relieved to discover that all their important belongings had been found. That's the main one there for me. Your car keys. Your car keys and all are still in it. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Are we adventure? <laughs> thank God it turned out okay. And no sort of well, thanks very much for coming out no and helping us. No right? Okay. I'm glad you got your car keys back. And the main thing your was that I got the passport and, that and my insurance card. We'll realise, I think, at some stage that they had a very lucky escape, and but for the timely arrival of the St. Martin the inshore lifeboat, the ambulance and ourselves, this incident could have finished like so many others in the past in a very tragic way.
As the men left to ponder why their boat sank so suddenly, the crew of the old pilot boat, the SG Martin, Davy and Joan, believed they'd had a little help from above. Both of us believe in God. Uh, you know, people tend to say, oh, believe in God, but that's the truth we both do. But I wouldn't come to see hope it were a life jacket, but I still believe in my Lord Maker, and I do believe in divine providence, yeah? It's just the way it is. Coming up, a suicide alert for the Portrush lifeboat. At the moment, we have two vessels uh, on scene uh, and also a Coast Guard presence of it. Roger, Belfast. Uh, we're, we're on the boat and on the moon, so if you need to just give us a shout, 16 or 0. Uh, this is Belfast Coast Guard. That's just super many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. started up both engines, in the next few minutes we'll be getting underway for a voyage this morning across to Stranraer. There's no comparison to handling the lifeboat and handling this. Um, the lifeboat's like a Ferrari, you know, she, she, she drives around uh, very, 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 very responsive. This ship's good too, and, but obviously she's an awful lot bigger and an awful lot longer. The lifeboat is something I do as a, I wouldn't say a hobby, that isn't the right word, but it's something I like to but this is what this is what pays the mortgage. Yeah, I get all the I get all the boat driving I want here. Thank you very much. I'm happy assisting the coxswain uh, as it stands at the minute. I'm perfectly happy with that post. I give what I can, and uh, since I joined the boat, I like to I give everything I possibly can. Every minute that I'm home, I'm on duty. Uh, I enjoy the light boat for the fun of it and the camaraderie that I, I have and the good times I've had. I have no. No plans to climb any higher, shall we say. I just assist and give whatever I can. While people drown in the sea in terrible accidents, sadly some people choose the water as a way of taking their own lives. Twice in recent months, the Portrush lifeboat crew has been called out to try to save people in tragic circumstances. It's late afternoon and the Coast Guard have asked the all-weather lifeboat crew to go on standby. It's an attempt to suicide at Ballycastle. Apparently there's a woman in the water and she's not accepting help. And I think there's um, people responding from Ballycastle. There are around 10 crew members who regularly drop everything and turn out when their pagers go off. Being a crew member is an unpaid and sometimes unpleasant job, done not for money or praise just from a sense of duty to the community. On the way to the boat, the crew agree on roles to get the vessel underway as quickly as possible. The crewmen have only a vague idea of their destination at this stage. They monitor the VHF radio messages between Belfast Coast Guard headquarters and the Coast Guard teams on the shore at Bally Castle, about 20 miles away. This is Belfast Coast Guard. Uh, Roger, would you be willing to stand by just offshore until uh, we're sure that it's uh, safely back away from the shoreline? Belfast Coast Guard, Portrush Lightboat. Uh, Portrush Lightboat is a Belfast Coast Guard. We're still on the burns here. I was just listening to that last message from uh, uh, yourself, between yourselves and Bally Castle. We still go ahead. Uh, this is Belfast Coast Guard. Uh, yes, uh, similar thinking here. Uh, would you just stand by at the present moment? We have two vessels uh, on scene uh, and also a Coast Guard presence of it. Roger, Belfast. Uh, we're, uh, we're on the boat and on the moon, so if you need to just give us a shout, 16 or 0. Uh, this is Belfast Coast Guard. That's just super many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ian, uh, Allegedly, a woman uh, was 
going to jump into the water in Bally Castle. Uh, at the moment, she is safely on the shore, but she is still not safe as yet. We are on a standby here at the moment until we find out whether we're going to launch or not. We probably won't have to launch because there is two vessels in the vicinity uh, with her, because it will take us at least an hour getting to Bally Castle. Anyway. The engines are fully warmed through and the Katie Hannan's crew wait quietly. Sunday morning, some of us were in church, some of us were walking the dog, some of us hadn't got up yet, so a uh, good turnout, yeah, not, uh, not uh, waiting for too many crew now. We turn out to a lot of uh, potential and complete suicides, actually, a lot of potential ones where uh, people are maybe in the situation where they're about to try and do it, and they're about to get talked down, or maybe they get talked down by onshore authorities. And, of course, right through to the aftermath, where we're maybe picking bodies out from people who've actually... Uh, successfully committed suicide, as it were. It's a very distressing thing for the crew. What, what sort of impact does it have on you guys? Yeah, well, it's distressing because, uh, you know, at the start of it, you don't really get into the uh, too many of the aspects about why the suicide attempt or uh, complete happening has happened. But uh, what, uh, whatever you're picking up a body, it is very distressing, especially if maybe they, they come off the top of the cliff onto rocks or They've maybe been in the water for a while. It's, it's really not pleasant, and uh, we're one of the few authorities around the coast to do that, and uh, it's, it's never nice. So the crew return to the lifeboat station and to their day jobs. A few weeks later, and the smaller inshore lifeboat crew has been tasked by the Coast Guard. On board are Kelly, Liam and Carl. Go, go, go. Kelly contacts the Belfast Coast Guard control room in Bangor, County Down. Belfast Coast Guard, Belfast Coast Guard. Shall be at 'll be this is Belfast Coast Guard Roger that's all received ops normal checks every one five minutes channel one six Belfast Coast Guard out it takes time along the coast and then up through the river mouth many miles further away the police helicopter support unit has been tasked to join the search they can be at the river site in around 15 minutes Shalby, Belfast Coast Guard. Uh, Roger, yes, we have uh, Coast Guard teams on scene, along with police, on a local rescue boat. Uh, the person is no longer on the surface. Request you contact Coleraine Tango, I say again, Coleraine Tango, upon arrival. They have uh, teams searching the shore, and if you can assist, please, over. 
for Kelly, Carl and Liam, the shout has now become a mission not of rescue, but one of recovery. Well, what happens in a search at the time is that the search will continue on the shore and on the surface of the water for as long as there is any chance of recovering someone alive. Um, at a certain point, someone has to make a decision that search teams are now tired and there's no longer any chance of the person they're looking for surviving and therefore the search has to be scaled down. The search then would resume the next day and maybe in subsequent days to try and recover the body of the missing person. Um, but that search itself at some point then will have to stop because obviously search teams need to be ready to react to incidents where there is somebody freshly at risk. Eight days later, almost at the mouth of the River Ban, the body has been spotted. Recovering um, those who have drowned or have been killed in accidents is not pleasant for anyone involved. It's always done with great dignity and great professionalism by all those involved, but it's not an easy situation. Um, and we try always to bear in mind the, the thoughts of the family. Obviously, whoever we're recovering is beyond all harm. Um, on this occasion, the uh, crew of the lifeboat came in on the, um, the little inflatable, the, the uh, Y boat, and had a very difficult uh, job to recover uh, this young man um, and then uh, brought him in uh, and handed him over to us. Uh, and then we, along with the, the police, made sure that he was transferred uh, carefully into the care of the uh, undertakers once he had been certified uh, as having died. It, it is a very final solution to maybe a problem which is not, uh, is not going to last, which may pass. And I think it's always better to try and talk to your family, to your GP, to whatever help is out there. And there, are, uh, there is a very big uh, support network out there available to people who feel in that sort of vulnerable situation. I'm afraid when it comes to the stage of someone uh, leaping from a cliff uh, or throwing themselves into water, the chances of survival are, are, are sometimes very, very low. Um, and sometimes, even when it's a cry for help, the circumstances are such th that the person puts themselves within seconds beyond all help. Next time on Portrush Sea Rescue, an air and sea search for a missing five-year-old girl. We model in the calm was in the back, in the back of our mind. The worst case scenario you dread to think about and you know that time is so much of the essence. And Bruce, the swimming dog, is in deep water again.